Let's talk a little bit about gun stabilization in sprockets. And today, for exactly that purpose, I have gotten a new version of the Shenok TM18 main battle tank for you guys to look at and kind of play around with because this one actually will be available for download. Uh, the creators will be uploading a video at the same time as this video is going to be releasing and uh, I'll be directing you guys to that video down in the description below as well as in the comment section. So be sure to check out that video for the download link. It will be hosted on my website just like the um, other community packs that I've created. So yeah, this tank of course being an MBT has come with stabilization. And this stabilization, unlike the one that I did with the file manipulation tutorial, actually doesn't use any kind of cheats to be achieved. This actually is solely out of the suspension of the tank. And I can see even though there's a little bit of vibration, of course, when there is some deficits in the terrain, uh, when the terrain is mostly flat, which does actually happen quite a bit in the sprockets, the tank will achieve near perfect stabilization despite only having a gun elevation of 3.11 degrees a second. Which is really quite slow as you guys can see right here. But despite that, the gun is just perfectly stable when driving on ground like this. And again, of course, this is pretty much flat ground. But there are places where even if the, it's not like too flat, you can still get your gun on target very, very quickly. And you can still like rely on your tank being able to shoot pretty stably and quickly. Again, this is all done without file manipulation, without the cheats of the high level gunner. Uh, and yeah, we're going to be talking about how this has been achieved. So when it comes to tanks like these and getting the guns to be stable, there are three concepts to take a look at. And for that, we're going to go back to the middle here. Uh, the first concept is going to be terrain uh, deficits. So, for example, right here, when I go down this ramp, you can see there's no way for me to keep the gun from going down. No matter what I would do, okay, very much, the gun will go down like this, you can see. You're going to have a moment of destabilization. But, the longer your tank is, the smaller the angle, like between like this angle, right here, where my front wheels are touching the lowest section, and Maru is being the top section, at a point where the tank is flat again. So if your tank is longer, your gun will be automatically more, more stable in situations like these, because the angle for our, at which you can do this is going to be lower, because the, like by the time you fall over, because of the balance point being right here, as you guys can see, is going to be at a lower angle, let's say it will be like this angle, because the tank will be, you know, longer. And from here, to here is much easier to compensate for than with a shorter tank. So that one with a ta uh, tank size that is convenient in length but not too long or too short. Um, again of course you do want to have some uh, like uh, like make sense where you uh, like have common sense I mean with how long you make your tank because if it's too long of course it's going to be much heavier and that's also something you don't want. So you're going to see the, the gun being balanced enough to be pretty much stable. As I, despite of many terrain deficits thanks to these metal, uh, these concrete bars. And uh, actually one flaw of this tank right now is that it can't climb the, the extremely steep slope of these high concrete bars. So you're going to have to go at it from a weird angle. But still the tank is pretty stable for the most part and here we can actually see some swing going in in the uh, the last part there which I'll be going into right after the again first section terrain deficits so for terrain deficits to, uh, to, uh, I, to, again to recap uh, the tank length is a very important matter or well the contact length between the front wheels and the rear wheels are like the important factor so basically from here to here this is what counts Anything else doesn't really count. Like, if you have your wheels, uh, like, shorter, but your end length is still longer because you have, like, spacing in your wheels, then, of course, the total contact length along the ground is going to be shorter, and it doesn't help. Another thing that does help is center of mass, because 
let's take it to the extreme here. Let's go over to where the um, trenches are over here. I'm gonna take the right trench because I can go at a very slow speed there and show it very precisely. So this tank will be continue to be perfectly stable, even when it's like perfect, like kind of partially over the trench. You can see here it's still it doesn't fall down at all because the center of mass is still on the ground in the back. But by the time it kind of starts to flip over, as you can see right here, it hits the other side of the trench, so it stays stable. So it doesn't matter how deep that hole is, as long as the tank has is long enough to have the center of mass stay above one side of support until it has support across, it's never going to have issues with these kind of holes, so it's going to go straight across it. And here you can see it kind of dips down right here, and I can't just barely get stuck. But if I had some starting movement speed, I would be able to cross it. Of course, I would notice some de uh, destabilization because the center of mass did shift. But again, if you would have an even longer tank, it would be able to get through those kind of gaps without being destabilized. And right here, this kind of like hole on the terrain right here is going to be a very similar case. It, how, the longer your tank is, again, the more contact points you have the less the terrain is going to affect the tank and places right right here. But tank length is not everything because suspension is actually very important as well. Because let's say because some terrain deficit your tank does destabilize. Like right here you can see it was bouncing up and down for a split second but it almost immediately stopped. There are two ways of getting that to improve. And both lie in the suspension settings of the tracks. Sadly only the uh, torsion bar suspension, so either one of these two, work for this. The bogies cannot be adjusted, so they don't work. Like when I click on this one, you only have the option for damping and an adjust value. Of course, you do have the height value to kind of adjust it right there, and I am touching stuff that I shouldn't be touching, but whatever. But yeah, these, these bogies are not ideal for the most part. So let's say like lower the diameter. And you can see like my tank is it's just way too heavy. I can't adjust the bogies. That's like the biggest problem with these. And even though they have huge amounts of torque, they just can't carry the weight of a tank like this. So you can see right here just pancakes on the ground. And overall, I cannot advise ever using bogies when you're trying to make a serious build. So we're going to go back to the um, file right here, the tank. And yeah, this one of course can handle itself pretty well. But as soon as you can see, as soon as I kind of go off the ground, you can see the, the suspension really acting in and falling down. And when I land on the ground, it compresses. And of course, that is what we want, because the more it compresses on one side, where it, when it hits the little rope, as you can see right here, the less the tank will tilt, like, vertically, like, like let's say the gun elevation, this, this rotation angle, the entire tank is doing that angle, rotation, so, like, now it's tilting down, now it's going back to horizontal, and here it'll be going up. Again, like, the more your suspension compresses, the less of a problem that becomes. And to maximize the compression ability of your suspension, uh, you only really do that by decreasing the diameter and increasing the length to weaken the amount of torque. If I you can see here, this one even has an even weaker torque, but now it starts to compress too much and it starts to pancake a little bit. We don't want it to pancake. So I'm going to put it back up to the higher number, you can see it's no longer pancaking. So you want to have a minimum amount of strength so that your tank doesn't pancake, but you don't want any more than that, because the, like, if I make this suspension, like, way too powerful right here, you can see it doesn't compress at all. It, it, it really just doesn't compress, which makes the gun less stable. And, yeah, there's more noticeable, like, terrain inconsistencies. Of course, this terrain right here is almost perfectly flat, but as soon as I like, cross a trench, cross a stream, the gun gets all upsetty spaghetti, and yeah, the only way to fix that is to soften up your suspension. So, you don't actually want to look at the specific, you kind of want it around the specific weight, and then you're going to look 
whether that is like too powerful or too weak. If it starts like just try to match this number, the specific weight and target targets adjust by this one. So try to match it at first by by keeping these one both numbers as low as possible. Um, if you need to strengthen it because it starts banking, increase the diameter. If you need to weaken it because it doesn't pancake, keep increasing the the length until it starts pancaking, and then adjust it back up you know, in terms of strength so it stops pancaking. And that's how you got this really nice suspension that doesn't really like be too stiff and it compresses very nicely. And again, this helps you stabilize the gun. And yeah, that's the main thing for the suspension to get started with. Because the second thing, uh, damping, uh, it actually has a rule of thumb to work with. So, so this is the main thing where you actually have to like worry about getting a right amount of strength, so it just barely does not pancake. And um, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward process. Just get in there and test it out until you get the right number for your tank. Of course, it will be different based on a tank to tank basis. Some tanks are heavier and have less road wheels, which will affect like, uh, or more road wheels that will affect the way it will handle. And yeah, so that's how we uh, decrease the amount of uh, effect for the train deficit. So now we're going to be over to swing. So let's say the tank does like kind of bounce up and down because of a train deficit. What will happen then is completely up to the suspension's damping, which is basically uh, how badly the suspension wants to be in its neutral position. A higher number means it's much harder for the suspension to be moved up and down out of the position. And a lower number, it will be more easy. If it's too easy, it is possible for the tank to basically get this rocking motion. Like, it, it, it compresses on one side, it pushes back up, which will compress it on the other side, and just start swinging back and forth. Which will give the iconic like wobbling gun effect that you see in many tank games. And to decrease that, we want to find a sweet shot, uh, spot for the damping. Because if the damping is, again, is too weak, you will get like too low of an effect. And if it's too high, we will get uh, like a different effect. So I actually have this image for that to kind of get a feeling for you guys. Um, so if it's way too weak, you'll see it will go just go up and down, up and down the suspension. If it's too strong, it will take too long for it to dampen out. And if it's just slightly too weak, it will still dampen out, but it will still veer off to the other side, which we don't want. Because then the gun, like right when it's on this section, it will compensate for being too far down, and we don't want that. Because then you'll get double compensation for the gunner. So you kind of want to have it like try to start on the high end, and then start decreasing it until you see it getting worse again. So, uh, the sweet spot for dumping is generally within 10 to 30,000 units of dumping. Uh, it doesn't really have a unit specific thing, like how S angle has a degree, amount of degrees. Dumping doesn't have that. So, yeah, if you want the uh, dumping to be just kind of start between 10 or 30,000, you don't want to go much above or below that. And just keep adjusting it until you get a number that you think is right. Again, this stuff, the suspension, better stabilization, is a work of love for your tank. And you will only really achieve that through harsh testing. And it will never be quite perfect. There will always be little bumps that can get you out of your way. But once you're on like, somewhat flat ground, the tank will stabilize quite well. Note that both with the train deficits and the uh, rocking motion... Speed is also an important factor, because if your speed is higher, the uh, you will encounter more bumps in the terrain than if your tank is slower. And of course, it will also make it so that your tank has less time to compensate for them through like gunner elevation or whatever. So your tank will be overall less stable as a result. But yeah, that is pretty much it for t uh, number one and two. And then the third aspect is the vibrations of the tank. So, no matter what will happen, you will have these tiny, tiny terrain deficits that will just affect your tank, no matter what happens. So you can see right here, I'm just ever so slightly, my gun is vibrating a little bit. Of course, the gunner side doesn't help with it either. 
But there, there are tiny vibrations right here, and again, that's damping related. As long as you stay in that sweet spot, you should generally be fine with damping. It's like, it's really just like the tiny details kind of thing. Where if your damping is still slightly off, it will still like lead into uh, destabilization. But generally, swing is the bigger cause of loss, loss of stabilization than that um, vibrations is. So, yeah, as long as you kind of look at your uh, tank's length and getting your suspension kind of right like that, you will be pretty much sat for getting a stabilized gun. And, yeah, this is actually, like, much more straightforward than a lot of people may think. So we're going to go over to on the top of these real quick to kind of show off the effect of swing. I'm going to have to start entering it diagonally, and my crew was not happy that I did that. There we go. And I might get... Yeah, okay, I might get stuck here. Never mind. Let's turn around again and try it one more time. Get on top of there. Because it will really sw show, like, an overrated effect of swing. When there's, like, repeated bumps that are very similar. Okay. There we go. So I'm gonna go on my tank side, and you kind of see it's going up and down. This this is like the effect of swing, and the better your damping, like, is in that sweet spot, the faster it's gonna be adjusting from like that state back to the stable state. But the only way to prevent swing altogether is again the length of the tank and the con its contact points. One thing to know that, uh, as well for, like, sprocket specific, which isn't really related to, um, the real physics of the game, is that the amount of return rotors, which you can see right here, does affect your stabilization as well as the width of the return rotors. Now, why is I still unsure why this is the case? But if you make your return rotors very wide and very large in quantity, you will get better results. As you can see right here, they all have very wide, very uh, like high amount of return rollers. And it, it somehow helps. Not sure why. You could just hide them behind some plates. And uh, of course, interleaved road wheels will also slightly help. Because the chance that there's a wheel uh, to act as a contact point is going to be there more. So there's going to be less bumping up and down. But those are all tiny little details. Again, to re uh, uh, recap the entire episode here. Make your tank long, but not too long. Get as weak of a suspension as possible using the uh, torsion bars without making it pancake. Then get a damping amount between 10 to 30,000. And you will be pretty much set. Again, this tank and its contemporaries, the um, export and the side skirt variants, will all be available. So here you can see one that has some uh, side skirts uh, version, which will kind of cover up the ERA a little bit. Which, of course, is still made out of fuel tanks. And there's also going to be the non export version. Which will have a hand screw, which will give it an auto loader, being only two and a half seconds, and yeah, an insane turret. But the turret is kind of annoying with sound, so yeah, you do use it only if you can handle those noises. Of that, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.